Hi everyone, welcome back to a new season of uh, Freelance Creative Exchange. I'm your host, Jace. Over the years, we met many Singaporean creatives who have headed overseas to hone their craft and also to pursue their goal. So in this overseas edition, we wanted to learn more about how they start uh, what they are doing and build their career overseas. And today, I'm very happy to be on a call with Karen. Hi, Karen. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Hi Karen. Jay. Yeah. Thank you for taking the time to speak with us. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. Thank you for having so, me on. <laughs> no, always a pleasure, right? So I have known Karen a while back and we have been communicating more via WhatsApp, you know, and emails. So this is the first time we are actually on screen together. <laughs> yeah. And then put me put me on the spot with the interview and everything. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah, but thank you. Thank you so much for doing this. So, Karen, you are a Singaporean, but currently you actually live in Bangkok. Yeah, so I've been living here for just over a year. Um, basically, I moved here just in time to have the full experience of a lockdown. <laughs> oh, wow. I know. But it's not been so bad, actually. Because yeah. Thailand, had it, Thailand had it easy. Right. Right, and yeah. and I guess to a lot of Singaporean, Thailand is a dream place <laughs> for holiday. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. I, I mean, compared to being locked down in Singapore, I would say uh, I'm very glad I made the move. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, would you, Karen, you, would you like to share with our audiences a little bit about yourself, right? And then you know, share with us what what made you decided to move to Bangkok just before the lockdown. Um. So. I mean, I was working with um, a publishing company, Penguin Random House, for eight years. It was a very long time, and you know, I was very happy there, being being around books all the time. I was very happy with um, working with the people that I was working with. Um, I loved the team, the atmosphere, the industry. But then, you know, after eight years, you kind of feel like, okay, I think it's time for a change. Um, and then, you know, just looking around, Bangkok is a great place. Like Thailand is a lovely country, you know, it's got, um, it's easy. It's very comfortable for expats, for, for foreigners. Um, people are really nice. Um, they're very, um, they're very easygoing. Um, and then also there is the little uh, perk of currencies. <laughs> so if you leverage that, you know, you can have a really nice life in Thailand. So yeah, right. why not, right? Right. So you basically just plot yourself out from Singapore and and move to Thailand. Wow. Mm-hmm. So how brief? Do you actually have any contacts there, or you know, how do you manage? How do you establish your freelance career, right, in a in a new place all over again? Um, it takes work. So the good thing is that I have um been working a lot with clients in Singapore. Um, and also it was through a contact um, in Singapore that I got put in touch with somebody who works in Bangkok. Um, they have a they have a business. Um, it's actually a cybersecurity firm, something oh. that is completely out of my comfort zone. But uh, I started working with them first and they and the CEO is based in Bangkok. Mm. So, you know, it's, it's through little things like this. You just kind of have to go out and like, you know, hit butt a little bit and, and try and make connections. So currently, what type of um, projects are you working on? At present, I'm working with this uh, freelance um, solutions platform. Actually, it's more than just freelancers. It's also with small businesses and all you know, all the full range of independent doers. Um, it, and the platform is called Doer Circle. So what they do is they try and address some of these problems that you know, working independently, you face. Um, so you would say. For instance, with me working as a freelancer, I've had problems, you know, trying to find um, some of these tools that I need. I have had to pay more because I'm no longer part of a company or, you know, just little things like health insurance. Um, these, these become things that you have to figure out for yourself. So they, they're trying to gather um, all these solutions and then also kind of um, bargain for lower prices. So this is perfect job for me because I have um, just started out in this and I understand these problems. Mm-hmm. So I manage uh, marketing and communications with uh, Duo Circle. So it's kind of um, I hate marketing and um, 
communications at this present moment. So strategizing, and then because we are a startup also, um, there's a lot of execution that I need to take uh, charge of as well. But it's, right. it's kind of the full spectrum, yeah. So what is what are some of the, um, you know, first thing that you do Right. Uh, when you move over to Thailand as a as a remote workers. So the interesting thing is, while COVID has been quite devastating for a lot of the world, it actually kind of worked in my favor, because that was the time when everybody started having to go online and figure things out, you know, digitally. They started moving operations online, um, and people had to come to terms that, like, okay, look, we have to learn to work remotely. You know, there was all this social distancing going on. And so when I approached Lewis, I thought I actually saw a post, um, a job posting that they had on their website. And I thought it was like, it was really interesting. So I got in touch with them um, and I said, look, I'm interested. And uh, Hella, the, the founder of um, Duo Circle, she gave me a call. We had a chat and she has no problems with me being in Bangkok. It's also one of their target countries. So they are they're launching here. There's been a soft launch, but um, so it just positioned me very nicely. Um, and a lot of people so far have not had issues with where I'm physically located um, because, you know, everybody's doing meetings online. You're in the same country, you're in the same city, but you're still meeting online. So COVID actually um, worked in my favor as far as that's concerned. Right. Yeah, that sounds great. So is there anything additional that you have to do being a, a remote workers in that sense? Like, um, you know, some of our freelancers actually, uh, you know, brush out their LinkedIn profiles, you know, and, and things like that. Is there yeah. something special that you have done during your move, you know, um, to Thailand? Um, so the usual, I had to brush out my uh, LinkedIn. I actually for the first time properly sat down and did up like a portfolio site it's still pretty nonsense but uh i had to do that um i had to work on my resume uh you know just just put together your your personal brand and your profile um and then just be able to be found in the right places right and then also go and clean up <laughs> my social media and delete all this stuff from before uh right. so yeah just just yeah just curating my personal brand that was that was quite important but also in part you know moving to a foreign country you just have to you have to figure out a lot of things um so if you want to talk about adulting right being a freelancer i feel it's like this crash course on adulting it's like the spartan race of um do it yourself you have to go figure out everything for yourself and it's and it's through that also that you know, being in a foreign country, there's this whole learning experience. Um, and some parts of it are really frustrating, but then you you have to be open to to everything. You have to be open to the problems, to the challenges as well. Um, and I thought it was, I think I think for myself, it's been a very enriching experience, just having, go, having done all these things for myself with no help of um, administration, uh, or like a larger system that backs me. Mm. Right, yeah. So um, what kind of compromises, um, you know, you have made, you know, for the move to Thailand compared to when you're in Singapore? Do you have to make some compromises as a freelancer? Um, I suppose, yes. I think in any new sort of situation, you do have to. You have to, you have to be open to giving up some of your ideas of how things work. Um, so for instance, talking about being part of a larger system, you know, things like having to now take care of my own invoicing, having to do all this paperwork by myself. I used to just like, whatever I didn't want to do, I would pass it on to someone else. At most I'd buy them an ice cream and thank them or something. But now it's my problem, right? If I don't do the invoicing, I don't get paid. Um, and then you get you lose um, the perks and the comforts of being part of a larger system too. Um, and then also, it's little things because now not only am I freelancing, I am also working remotely um, in a foreign country, which takes away a lot of that network and um, community that I had. So it it's really putting myself outside of the of what I've been used to. Um, being part of a, a team that I, I love. So do, do you regret the decision? <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> it depends on what day you ask me. <laughs> but no, I think in general, I think it. No, I don't think so. I actually have found myself really enjoying it, um, just because the, you know, having been eight years in in a very um sort of uh homogeneous state right I, like i reached equilibrium with that now i have this whole like breadth of experiences so i've met so many different types of people i've worked for you know a jewelry company i've worked for um ice cream parlor i've done work for cyber security which i tell you is just insane um and then now with the solutions platform so it's just given me a lot of insight into how things operate outside of the publishing industry which which I actually am really enjoying. And outside the country as well, because now that you are working from Thailand, right, you have to get used to the whole new systems as well. So is there any differences working from Singapore and working from outside the country, you feel? Oh, so many. <laughs> so many. Where do I start? I think, first of all, you need to kind of um, get settled into the physical and conceptual space of a new location. So it's understanding things, how things work, how people work, how the culture works, and it's very different. Singapore is so efficient. You know, Singapore is the kind of it's kind of like a Disneyland almost. You just step in there, everything's functioning, everything goes right. You 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 know, any vote blocks, and because it is my home country after all, so I know it like the back of my hand. It's easy for me to navigate. Coming to Thailand means that I've had to learn how things here work. Um, you know, sometimes it means taking a step back, but then sometimes it also works in your favor because you know you, you know if you push a little bit, there are some things that you can get done um, that in Singapore you would not have been able to, uh, yeah, so easily accomplish. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. So how do you overcome some of those challenges when you first move there and without you know much connections? Um, I think you just ask. You ask for a lot of help. Um, it, you don't have to know people personally, but say you're trying to open a bank account, it can be a bit of a roadblock sometimes because um, the paperwork here is very different. So the sort of the sort of identification that you have to provide, the, the time that it takes for them to do all this stuff. I was at the bank close to three hours just to open a bank account. Yeah, wow. so this is <laughs> definitely not Singapore. Um, yeah, so, but the thing is, you, you ask, you keep pushing, you ask, you ask to speak to people, and, and then eventually you speak to the right people <laughs> to get things done for you. Uh, and I think, I think when you have, when you're unafraid to request for help, you find that a lot of people are actually very happy to extend that helping hand. So I think a lot of times in Singapore, because we've been taught like, okay, you know, figure it out, don't ask stupid questions, right? And it's not true at all. The more you ask, the more the more you receive. Honestly, yeah, so especially think, being in Thailand, I guess because uh, yeah, you know, the Thais are known to be friendly, approachable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Wait, go out of way Yeah, I, I'm sure. But do you do you have to overcome the language part of it? Because I suppose you know, um, you know, the comfortable language for us or the default language for any Singaporean is probably English. So when you go to to Thailand, right, where, you know, they have their own Thai language, do you have to overcome any difficulty in the language? Um, so, I have to admit, I have been a bit lazy in learning Thai because I have not had to. That is, the, that is I think, the main reason. Um, I, I was initially going to take lessons, but then there was the lockdown, so I kind of put that on hold, and then I just didn't really pick it up again. So I can do things like I can count. I can tell you how to, uh, where my house is. I can ask how much I can pay, but uh, just the very basic stuff. And the the nice thing about being in Thailand is because they're so used to foreigners mm. that you largely can get around. Uh, there's, there's no, it's not essential to speak Thai in order to be able to do things, get things done. Um, Although that being said, it is I think actually important to be able to speak the language. I should I should get back to that. <laughs> yeah, I mean it, it, no harm in terms of knowing your additional language. In fact, it might help you to get Thai clients as well. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and, and to 
just to right. understand people a little bit better, right? Yeah, yeah. But in terms of the culture wise, do you see a very big difference in the way that we work? Yeah. Uh Singapore's uh they are a bit more hardcore, I think. <laughs> so here so here people take it a little bit easier. Um if something is not going according to plan, it's fine. You know, there's a way around or take a little bit more time with it. Um, if there's, if there are challenges, they are they're very comfortable with it. Uh, so they will just take it in stride, and I, and I enjoy that too. I like that um, because you don't spend all day like pulling hair out. You know, something doesn't work, it's fine because these things are going to happen. Um, they're going to be, they happen in Singapore. They happen here. It's just the approach is very different. So um, if you learn to understand that and you keep an open mind with things, I think it's it, there's no problem. So would you recommend um, freelancers to consider moving to Bangkok as well if they're interested to venture overseas? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come, come, come. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm telling you. <laughs> it's so nice. And, and because I've, I've been very lucky, right? All, everybody I've worked with has been very generous in terms, in terms of flexibility um, with time and, you know, where I am. So sometimes, like, if I need to travel uh, within the country, uh, it's okay. And I, so that means that I can spend my weekend at a beach. I can spend my weekend diving. I can spend my weekend in Chiang Mai, in, like, on a mountain. Or, like, I, I can move around and... I tell you, Thailand is so nice for that. <laughs> it was built for that. Wow. <laughs> it's like, it's destination. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> definitely come here. <laughs> but in terms of the immigrations, in terms of the challenges that you mentioned, uh, it, it's something that, you know, it, it's, it's worth it for all the problems that you face, right? <laughs> um, so I, I found that it's worth it. Uh, there are definitely challenges. It's not the... You know, anytime you want to move into a new country, this it it takes a bit of work, right? Um, and then there's a question of also visas. Um, what sort of visa you're going to apply for? Um, how long it will last you? You know, what what are your options? So those are all things that you need to take into consideration. And I don't want to blanket apply that to everyone. I think everybody's situation is different. I don't have that many responsibilities in my personal life. Um, for instance, I don't have children, so that it makes my life a lot easier. Um, if I'm free to come and go as I please. Um, and so it really depends. I would say, you know, explore, um, find out, uh, speak to the embassies, understand how things work, speak to people who have moved, contact me if you need help. Um, and and then just understand the process of it and what sort of pains you might face and then decide if that is worth it for you. It has been very worthwhile for me, um, but I think everybody has to figure it out for themselves. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So, what's your current plan like, right? Um, I mean, do you have like a plan to say, okay, I'm going to stay in Bangkok for three years, and then I'm moving back to Singapore, or I'm moving to another Asian countries? So, do you have such plan currently? No, I actually, um, for the moment, I see myself staying here for you know a few more years at least, um, and then. And then we'll see. I I don't want to make firm plans for the next 10 years just because things change, right? Like who knew there was going to be a pandemic? Mm -hmm. um, but I like to stay a bit more fluid with my plans. Uh, I keep my options open, be able to move if I need to, uh, you know, change pace, change scenery. So um, go with the flow in that sense. Yes, very much so. <laughs> I, I guess that's the, that's the reason I'm freelancing, you know. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> right. Thank you so much, Karen, for sharing. I just have one last question before I let you go. So what advice would you give to a freelance creative who is looking to venture overseas? Oh, this is a high level, high level question. <laughs> um I guess take every challenge in stride. Uh there is nowhere that you go where there are no problems. So do not also enter things and say like, oh, you know, back home, this would have happened or back home, this is how things would have done. That's not the reason that you want to move. You want to move because it is not back home, right? So you have to be open to things being completely different, uh, sometimes a bit chaotic. Um, but I think every step is sort of a learning um, opportunity. And then with that, you just go boldly. 
Yeah, I think that's very well said. Yeah, I think that's great advice. So thank you very much, um, Karen, for taking the time to talk to us and share your expertise, right? So um, to the audiences, if you like our show, subscribe and listen to us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Check out our website and join our Creative and Works community on Facebook, Instagram and TikTok. So till then, be kind, stay safe and we'll check soon. Bye everyone. Bye, Karen. See you.